Hello, I'm Chrissy Seaton and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to continue on from the previous one that I adapted from this wonderful book called um, Amuna and the Noahides. And it's really so well written with day-to-day -day applications that are very easy for us to understand and also to put into correct context in terms of how we as Noahides should behave in this wonderful world. So let's get on with this and have a look at what is going to be said. Now, in this section, we're coming on to um, page 17 and this goes from page 17 to 21 today and it's called the difference between the 7 and the 613 hence the title of, <laughs> i couldn't help myself with the title of this video noah hides seven gear shifts and i thought we'd keep it in in uh tune perhaps with the uh previous videos about how we have to obey the operator's manual, just like a new car. But here we go. And uh, so I'm going to read from the book because I don't really want to stray from the actual text. I don't want to stray from the simplicity of the text. So here we go. It says that, uh, why must the Jewish people fulfill 613 mitzvahs or, or commandments? whereas the Gentiles are only given seven to fulfill. Well, this is how we're going to find out about it. It says there are three main answers to this query or question, or can, some people call it a concern. So let's take a look at the very first one. And it says, firstly, the Almighty demands a constant state of holiness and righteousness from the Jewish people. And most of us understand that. Uh, on the other hand, he obligates the nations of the world, that's the Gentiles, to be righteous, but they need not be holy. Now, holiness and righteousness together require the observance of all 613 commandments given to the Jews at Mount Sinai, whereas the seven particular commandments alone suffice in attaining righteousness, which applies to us, the Gentiles, the righteous Gentiles. Seven for the Gentiles, 613 for the Jews. The Torah goes on and talks uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 26 verses 18 to 19 and says such commandments as the zitzits, tefillin, mezuzahs and ritual purity are necessary for the Jews in order to attain their holiness. But for us as the other nations, they serve no purpose and can even be detrimental. Like a healthy person ingesting an antibiotic or other superfluous medication they don't require. It's a good example, that said, hasn't it? The second, one, the second thing brings us to this. Uh, the Jews and other nations are neither superior nor inferior to one another. They simply have separate tasks. Now, if you want your car fixed, you take it to a motor mechanic, a trusted motor mechanic. If you want your sewing machine fixed, you don't take it to a motor mechanic, do you? You take it to a sewing, domestic sewing machine specialist. Because they know exactly how to fix your sewing machine. And likewise, a motor mechanic knows exactly how to fix your car. Not necessarily is he able to fix any other machine. So here's a little example here. A Boeing 767 can transport 250 people across the Atlantic Ocean of a speed of nearly 600 miles per hour 
On the, head, on the other hand, an F-16 has a range of no more than 600 miles without refuelling and can only carry the pilot. But it can fly at more than twice the speed of the 767 and fight wars which the 767 cannot. So here's another mechanical analogy on the differences between what is required for the Jews and what is required for us, the Gentiles or the Noahides. In a like manner, the Jews are charged with the spiritual illumination of the world. Uh, now, it says, if they fail to maintain a high level of holiness and morality, the Jews cannot teach the spirituality to the world. Also, if they don't set an impeccable example, they cannot teach. Okay? Since it's their job to teach the seven Noahide commandments to all mankind, they must first observe the entire 613. So we all have a task. The Jews have a, a task and a responsibility and obedience, commandments, etc. Because they're required to not only be righteous, but also holy, holy nation. We, as the Gentiles, nations of the world, are required to concentrate on righteousness and therefore righteousness in the world. The Jews are our teachers and we are responsible for uplifting the world in terms of being righteous. And that starts in the home and in our communities. It goes on and says, this is uh, number three, it goes on and says, or it says our third answer, the Jewish soul and the souls of other nations are simply different in their spiritual composition. Now, this is extremely important to grasp your mind around this. So, I'll read that again. The Jewish soul and the souls of the other nations are simply different in their spiritual composition. Their relative souls, therefore, thrive on a different type of diet. Just as a diesel engine and a petrol or gasoline, as some people call it, engine requires different ty uh, types and so do the Noahide soul and the J Jewish soul. So again, we're coming back to the motor, to the vehicle. You know, it's different fuel, different fittings in terms of the Jews and the Noahides. It goes on and says, imagine that the spiritual fuel of a Jew, Jew is the 16, uh, 13 commandments is the gasoline, whereas the spiritual fuel for a Noahide, the seven commandments is diesel fuel. Now, this is delightful. I want you to listen carefully. There are significant differences between the two, between gasoline and diesel. Gasoline is highly volatile, whereas diesel is not. As such, gasoline evaporates much quicker than diesel does. Maintenance of a gasoline engine is much more costly and intricate than that of a diesel engine. Likewise, likewise, maintaining a Jewish soul requires 613 commandments, whereas the souls of the other nations run smoothly on the spiritual fuel of the seven Noahide commandments. It makes you want to stop and think, doesn't it? Puts it so, so simply. And yet we as individuals have to continually try to complicate things complicate our lives, our duties, our, our commitments, all sorts of things.
keep it simple. Goes on now and talks about man-made ethics. A person might ask his or herself, what they need what uh, what they need the seven Noah hide commandments for now it goes on and says ethics are relative and differ from society to society this is talking about man-made ethics so each society has its own ethics and customs the human wrought ethics therefore are problematic because in some communities or nations or whatever or, or, or um, even religions, there are other religions, uh, there are problems. Either they're problems relating to people being misled or misinformed or things are exaggerated and the, th and the list goes on, all sorts of things. And less on the truth. So there lies the problem. Few in history were, now I want you to listen to this, this is a sort of coming, um, there's plenty of people still living today that remember this. Us that are younger recall the stories and the readings we've had over the years. Few in history were as brutal as the Nazis, yet they had the stiffest of laws that prohibited cruelty to animals. This is a well-known fact. Under Nazi Animal Protection Act of 1933, it was forbidden to mistreat or mishandle animals in any way that would harm them. Force feeding fowl was banned. Animals in circuses and zoos, etc., had to be provided with the correct protection. It was also uh, prohibited people uh, from doing experiments on them on experiments on animals that were prohibited. You hold that thought. Uh, people who neglected their pets could be arrested and fined. Experimentation on animals was absolutely forbidden. As well as on human beings. But that didn't stop the vicious Nazis from killing and maiming Jews in medical experiments that raised the bar of unprecedented sadism. I don't need to repeat that. We all know what happened. The law also prohibited hunting on horseback, poisoning wild animals and using traps. Yet the same Nazis hunted Jew, European Jews, trapped them in concentration camps and poisoned them in the gas chambers. Now let's just think about that. So, Amuna and the Noahide, this little book contained so many real life thought provoking things for us to absorb, to mull over in our mind and to set our mind right about things. Because often we're chasing rainbows. We're wanting to do something that Noahides aren't required to do. The Jews may be required because it requires a level of holiness. That's not to say that we're unholy as Noahides. It's to say that it is uh, let me use a common term, horses for courses. You can't always take a prize race horse and, and then expect it to um, gather and muster cattle. Some might, but you, they're bred for different purposes, those animals. The same thing we are going to talk about is the Jews are charged with being holy as well as righteous and yet we as Noahides are required to just concentrate on being righteous and together with the Jews we will set the world right. But wasting our time worrying about whether we can do this or whether we can do that uh, when we have enough books out now including this one uh, that tell us the correct way and the correct path for Noahides. And I just love this book, the way it uses such common analogies, such as the motor vehicle, which we're all, most of us are familiar with. So, 
We're now sort of in the uh, Noahide driver's manual now, aren't we? You know, we've got uh, we've got our manual here, pocket manual. So let's uh, progress next, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. And we will continue with this brilliant little book. It won't take us long to get through it, but it's, it's extremely thought provoking, and it it just doesn't fiddle around with words. It says it how it is. And that, and we need to do things the way God tells us it is to be done. In the meantime, please take care and God bless.